today on rambling about cars monterey car week is almost here and we're going to give you a little bit of a preview of what's to come there's still a lot that we don't know i think there's going to be some surprises there's going to be some cool stuff but one thing that we do know right here right now is the new gmc canyon pickup truck we've got info and details on that and then we're going to do something a little different and i think a lot of fun we're going to build a car right here on the podcast a nissan z virtually of course so without further ado it is podcast time i am christopher smith and give it up across the way the one the only mr chris bruce how you doing man? i'm doing okay and as always please everyone like subscribe and comment we love all of those things and just a real quick preview for next week we were going to be reading a bunch of comments last week because we haven't done that a little while you might get some comments this week too but lots of comments next week but yeah, next next week we because we've got i mean last week was a busy show if you didn't catch it go back and watch it best cars of 2022 so far with pretty much all the motor one editors and us it was a great show this week we've got a lot to talk about yeah yep but so we've also had some great comments that we can't wait to get to absolutely um so monterey car week is coming up unfortunately monterey car week isn't technically a week if you look on the calendar they do have stuff that starts kind of sunday and monday of this coming week but that it's kind of it's not the most important stuff the things right. really kind of kick off on wednesday and unfortunately we usually record our shows on wednesday and just for timing and whatnot it, it worked out better we're going to give you a preview of what we know and what we think is coming as of right now and then in probably two weeks we'll be back here with someone who's actually at the show and we'll do a wrap up and we'll talk about all the cool stuff that was there that we might have missed and maybe auction results and maybe yeah. you know our, our guests can tell you what they saw so you're going to get kind of two hits at uh, monterey car week in the next like three weeks or so but and without and I, and I tell you, Bruce, does does it feel to you sort of like um, Goodwood felt earlier? Does it feel a little bit bigger than maybe it's been in the last couple of years to you? Because I, 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 oh, totally. I get a little sense of that. Totally. Yeah. It's, you know, it's kind of back to what it was in like 2018, 2019 mm -hmm. levels, um, if not maybe a little bit bigger even. Yeah, um, yeah, it's going to be a big show this year. And as you'll see as we go through, so um, I'll tell you as we go through them, some of the stuff we know is going to be there. Some of the stuff is just rumored to be there, but we got a good feeling. So I don't feel bad about building people's hype up because um, I got a good feeling. So yeah. without further ado, uh, we are going to see two Austin Martins there, two new Austin Martins. Unfortunately, we don't really know what either of them are, kind of, <laughs> sort of, um, but they just typed up two vehicles. We know one of them is going to be DBX related. Related, uh, right. So something DBX related is going to be there. Also, if you're one of the folks that get to go, they are going to have a cockpit from the um, upcoming Austin Martin Valhalla supercar that you can sit in and kind of get an idea what the view is going to look like and things like that. Not drivable, not like movable, but still a cockpit that you can, you know, rich guys who are there can get in and sit in and feel like, oh, this is what it's going to be like. And hopefully they'll write a deposit check to Austin Martin while they're there. That's yeah, I would, I would, I would get into that. Yeah, Literally. Totally. <laughs> yeah. Oh, terrible. Uh, it's terrible joke Wednesday. I should just be quiet and let you handle this segment. No, 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 no. But no. So <laughs> this is one we don't know much about. They literally yep. just said we're bringing two cars there and they're also going to have that cockpit for the Valhalla. Look back soon. We'll know about this time next week or a little bit later and we'll mm -hmm. be able to tell you. Um, one we know more about and that won't be there is Deep Breath, the <sighs> Audi S1 e-tron quattro hunatron uh and i mean that's this, a car we, that we've already seen right but i mean this is correct. this is you're gonna get to see it in person and right. and come on it's freaking cool <laughs> right this is its north american debut not it, it has yep. not yet been shown to the public in north america so if you are and it will be specifically at the motorsports reunion at laguna seca i should say 
Monterey Car Week is a ton of events spread over a week in the Monterey, California area. Kind of the headline event event is the Pebble Beach Concourse de Elegance, mm -hmm. but also there's the Motorsports Reunion, which takes place at Laguna Seca. There's the Quail, a motorsports gathering, which is like the super rich hoity-toity event where they hand out uh, fresh um, uh, oysters and you look at really expensive cars. Um, there's you know all sorts of other events that ha take place during that week. There are a ton of right. auctions. Um, so a yeah. lot of auctions. Yeah, we might. I mean, we might like, like Bruce said earlier. We might even have some auction results if there are some yeah. record prices, like from from supercars and hypercars. Uh, I mean, I've seen a lot of Ferraris, a lot of really rare stuff that's supposed to be going up for auction this time around. But yep. we were talking about the uh, the Hunatron. Of course, this is going to be Ken Block's electric Jim car for whenever he gets back onto that scene. And obviously, it was based. Not just loosely, there was a lot of inspiration taking from you know Audi's original S1 that um, mm -hmm. that is still just legendary to this day. And, and that car will be there. A, a, the 1985 Qu Audi Sport Quattro S1 Group B rally car that Walter Roll himself drove up the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb in 1987 and still holds the record for the un- uh, paved version of that course and no one's going to break it because you it doesn't have to exist all anymore the pavement that's there yep. so he that's it's the fastest dirt version of that course ever so you've kind of got the new one and the old one that are going to be at this event at the same time and hopefully they fire them up and take them around the track or something because if they don't that would just be a waste because they're right they're sitting right there at laguna seca take around the corkscrew i agree i agree i very much want to see this thing in action um, so moving through them here next up. So what was it? Was it two years ago? So two years ago, or it wasn't last year. Um, Bentley's Mulsanne division came out with, the uh, Oh, it's, it starts with the, uh, man, the, 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 the Bacalar. Yep. Yes. Uh, sorry for that. Um, and so this year they're going to be coming out with the Bator, the batter, it's B A T U R, and it's apparently named after a lake uh, in Indonesia. In yeah, in Bali, Indonesia. I, so, I'm not familiar with with that part of the world, unfortunately. Same, uh, but, but I'm going to go with uh, the Balur. Your your pronunciation there? Bot. I think it's Batur. Batur. Ba ba Batur. Batur. I, that's that's I'll, my best guess. I'll go with yeah. that one, which means it's probably wrong. But that that sounds like the best. That sounds like the best pronunciation for me, but yeah, Bentley. Anyway. Yeah, B Bentley will have this. Uh, they will be be debuting this this vehicle there. But here's what makes it cool: it will be limited run. We don't know how many. They only made twelve Bacalars, so I I wouldn't suspect they're going to make very many of these. But they're saying that it's going to show their future design language for electric vehicles. They didn't come out and say whether this was an electric vehicle. So there's mm -hmm. there's a little bit of wiggle room there. So this could have an engine. This might be electric. We don't know yet. But it, this is at least going to show the once Bentley EVs start coming, which uh, right now that's supposed to be in 2026 because they got pushed back a year. Um, they're going to kind of have some of these design cues. So kind of a cool preview of what's to come in a very, very small run vehicle. And of course, being uh, being Monterey, Pebble Beach, uh, nice nice area for Bentleys. Um, we just had an announcement that came from Bentley today. Mm -hmm. One hundred and three Bentleys are going to be there. Now, I, I I am sure it's not all like cars shipped over from Bentley. I'm sure they have um, owners and and clubs and groups involved, but uh, they're going to be there with, in some manner, one hundred and three vehicles to celebrate 103 years of Bentley. Mm -hmm. And they kind of okay. did something similar. If you remember at uh, the Goodwood Festival of Speed, they were celebrating the first turbocharged Continental from mm -hmm. what I think it was 83 or so. And they had a bunch of those there and they did a big parade. So kind of it, it you can really consider Monterey Car Week the American alternative to the Goodwood Festival of Speed. It kind of seems like in, in, in um, a sense, for sure. And uh, I mean, I'm excited to see a lot of those old Bentleys. I, I would like to oh, see, totally. I'd like to see what they're going to do with that. Yep. Uh, another vehicle we're going to see here is uh, also a blast from the past. You'll see what I did there once I pull this image up. <laughs> 
I know where this is going. Alpha Five. And I like it. Great uh, Scott. Sorry. It, can well DeLorean. Even if the new company here is amazingly successful, can they ever move past the Back to the Future franchise? No. 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 Nope. Bruce, you're shaking your head on the camera. Nope. Of course they I, can't. 50 years from now, 50 years from now, if the DeLorean reboot here is successful and one pulls into some restaurant somewhere, somebody in that vicinity is going to yell, 1.21 gigawatts. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, the Alpha 5, which, again, debuted earlier, that's going to make its public debut here at, uh, at Monterey at, at the Car Week. Yep. And um, Bruce, do we know, are there going to be any other DeLoreans there? There was something about them bringing some possible like concepts that they didn't go with or it's, something like that. I didn't quite understand the story. I didn't write it. If I'm honest, I saw we covered it and I, well, I, I wrote it and I didn't necessarily understand it. DeLorean, the, the reboot of DeLorean, they've been doing, um, they've been introducing concepts here through the summer of mm -hmm. what could have been. And the story is, well, th these are taken from the archives of the original DeLorean company of vehicles that were envisioned for the, for the future, uh, just, you know, in basic, in basic sketch form, but obviously were never realized. But then in their announcement, like, you know, there's the DeLorean Alpha 2, which is sort of like a, like a 90s sports car. There's the DeLorean Alpha 3, which is, is supposed to be sort of like a, a swoopy, Sedany kind of fastback electric thing, kind um, wagony. We're the, looking at it here now. If yeah, you're watching on YouTube. Um, and Delorean released all of these images in the uh, and you know I mean nice nice renderings, and it was spun as sort of like, you know, this was Delorean's plan to have all these vehicles, and it's like, well, no, it it's it's no. really more it's really more like just an alternate history of what could have been. That leads up to the new car, the Alpha 5 concept. Um, so we know that one's going to be there. And yeah. I remember uh, speaking uh, with DeLorean, a DeLorean representative earlier in the year. Um, they did say that they were revealing more concepts through the year. Um, hmm. But, uh, you know, again, they, they, they were very vague in how they were presenting it. So will there be other physical concepts from DeLorean? Honestly, we're not entirely sure at this point. This might just have to be a wait and see scenario, but we know yeah, the Alpha we'll 5 is going to be there. Watch this space. Yeah, the Alpha 5 will be there for sure. Whether there's more, uh, neither one of us know right now, and probably the only people that know work at DeLorean. So mm -hmm. in about a week, we'll find out. Very good. Here's another story I know you wrote up, and that is that the Hennessy Venom F F5 is getting a Roadster version, mm -hmm. and that's kind of all we know about it, right? <laughs> well, well, no, not necessarily. Um, okay, okay. It's, I'm being unfair. We we know well. We know it's going to have the exact same engine. Um, going by memory here, I'll see if I remember. Six point six liter twin turbo V8, making one thousand. 817 horsepower nailed it i'm hey look at that i'm looking right there on the screen it's the exact same powertrain as the venom f5 with a roof that hasn't reached the 300 mile an hour mark yet but it's getting darn close i think their last their last run they did as they're trying to build up to to hit that benchmark was something like 271 miles an hour so I mean, it it's it's a seriously fast street legal car all of that mm -hmm. power goes to the rear wheels of course there's going to be a Roadster version of it. It will be produced in limited numbers. We don't know the details on exactly how they're making the Roadster. Um, right. You know, wh whether it, I believe it's just going to be a removable type top. Um, looking at or, the image that we're looking at, it it sure looks like that's just going to be a removable panel. But Or yeah. technically, I mean, if you go by the classic definition of Roadster, like I'm okay. talking like classic way back in the day, no roof period. Mm -hmm. It was just, it was just an open roof, you know, an, an open top vehicle, no sure. roof to put into place, whether, whether that's the case or not. Th these are some of the details we don't know. Um, we thought that all the information was going to be released on 
uh, on the 9th of August, we got the teaser, which, oh, hey, and that's fine. That's cool. Um, the global debut is going to take place um, at the Quail uh, Monterey okay. Car Week. Uh, and I think they have that slated for August 19th, if yes. uh, if memory serves on that. So you are correct. A 300 mile an hour car with no roof. I think uh, I think in my article I said or, or Hennessy was saying, feel the wind in your hair <laughs> at 300 miles an hour. It's like, no, the wind just removes your hair at 300 mm-hmm. miles an hour, which totally. if that's the case, then I totally expect Hennessy to use that in their marketing material because what what a great what a great marketing message that would be, right? So here's one of the vehicles coming up next here is one that we're not sure of, but we have an inkling of. So mm-hmm. Lamborghini has been kind of doing something interesting. In their financial results, they announced that they were debuting three new vehicles in August. They confirmed that one of those would be a variant of the Huracan and that two of them would be variants of the Urus. So and they are teasing, as you can see here, the Huracan Storado, which is the weirdest idea of a vehicle we've seen in a while. They can can, are, can I just substitute weirdest for coolest? Sure. Yeah. Because we're talking yeah. about, I mean, we're talking about an off-road Huracan, right? Off-road in the. I, I mean, I mean, in quotes. Okay, so it, it, you're not going to take it to Mohab, but no. I, it's. I mean, it's it's like the high riding supercar, right? It's right. lifted up a little bit. Yeah. Um, it, it's got some it's meaty got tires, extra body cladding. It's got extra body stuff. cladding, right? It's, it's got a roof rack, which is adorable, <laughs> right? It's, it's like the Huracan all road, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, exactly. Um, That's exactly and, what it is. And, and I, I love stuff like this. I love, love, love stuff like this. And mm-hmm. I mean, nobody else really in that hypercar realm, supercar realm is really doing anything like this. So no. bravo to Lamborghini for doing something a little different. I, I, I hope this is what we see um, debuting here coming soon. I can't imagine any other Huracan variant unless they have something. I mean, the fact that just, they're teasing this one, unless right. it's a total bait and switch and they're like, got you. I, it's got to right. be this. The, the question is, is this debuting at Monterey Car Week or not? Because we know it's debuting in August. We know Monterey right. Car Week is in August. We know a bunch of rich people who love supercars are going to be in the same place in that little area of California. So you would think th- that's where you would do it, but we don't know for certain. Right. It's, yeah. No, piece it all together. The evidence points in, in a very singular direction. Uh, but this isn't the only Lamborghini there is uh, to no. talk about. You said there are two versions of the Urus that are going to debut sometime in August. And we right. think we know one of them might be the vehicle that just set a Pikes Peak record. Well, it's that's the funny thing. It didn't just set a Pikes Peak record. It set a Pikes Peak record in what June? Yeah, July, ba- yeah, was- back, back, yeah, yeah, back, back during the event. Right. It set a Pikes Peak record in June, and then Lamborghini just kept it under their hat because this vehicle didn't actually compete in the event, mm-hmm. but they had the uh, International Hill Climb folks time it just like they would time any other vehicle. So the time never came out because it was a non-competitive vehicle, but it still got timed. And now, a week before uh, Monterey Car Week, they said, hey, we set the production vehicle uh, record Pikes Peak, or production vehicle SUV record. Sorry, I need to clarify. Up Pikes Peak. So, again, the timing just seems way too... Convenient. Too much of a coincidence, yeah. Uh, What we don't know is what variant this is. So, we have spy shots. We know a refreshed Evo is under development. Or a refreshed Urus is under development. That could be called Evo. That could be called Evo, right. Correct. Sorry. I'm mixing up my own words. Um, We don't know if this is the Evo. We also, we know a plug-in hybrid version is under development. Mm -hmm. Could this be the way you put your stamp on your plug-in hybrid by setting a record like this? Could be. And then there's also a rumored version called the STX, which would be a high-performance version of the URS. So... Higher, we should clarify. Yes, high, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the Urus as it stands um, already does pretty good. But yes, Bruce, can I, can I take a moment here just to recognize the the incredible irony in the room? We started this Lambo discussion with a Huracan 
Riding to Hire featured you know prominently in an off-road setting and then we transitioned to a urus suv setting a record on a decidedly paved road course up pike's peak that's right the world has indeed gone mad everybody <laughs> that's indeed it is madness it is pure madness and I real quick, since we're talking about it here, it really like shattered the record. So a Bentley Bantega in 2018 set the previous record of 10 minutes, 49 seconds, almost 10 minutes, 50 seconds. Um, this Urus did it in 10 minutes, 32 seconds. So nice big cut out of the record there. So it it's it's a speedy SUV. It, it's a speedy SUV. And I mean, Mad respect for the Bentagia, but I can't help but think there have to be some other SUVs out there that if if the manufacturer decided to take them to Pikes Peak, they could probably set that record. Um, I mean, I'm thinking about Aston Martin. I'm thinking about Porsche. Right. A, a, a Cayenne Turbo GT. I would even be curious. I, you would have to change the tires, I bet. But what like a tr Jeep Trackhawk would do or a Durango Hellcat or something like that. Um, I mean, DBX 707 shows, DBX, yeah. shows, shows every sign that it could probably set that record. Um, not to take anything away from Lamborghini, because that's right. still an insanely great time to get up the big hill. Mm -hmm. um, and we're still talking about an SUV. So yeah, whatever Lamborghini has cooking here in August, we're we're thinking it's going to be at Monterey during during right. Monterey at some point. So if you ask me to put week, down week money right now, I'm guessing the Huracan and Ann Urus are debuting at Monterey, and then whatever the other one, is, the other Urus probably comes later. I'm, so, I'm guessing. So you think they'll you think they'll separate them? Yeah, I don't think they'll do all three at once. Maybe I'm wrong. I'll, but I'll tell you, I'll that, take that bet because I think all, I, I think all three will be there. Okay, I, it yeah. makes sense to me if you're if you're gonna do it. I mean, do it all all in one spot. Have two yeah. vehicles that have been teased that you know about, and then just have and one the to surprise. say, "Oh, by the way, yeah, you know, here's here's our surprise." So, That's if you point. want, I'll take that bet. Uh, okay, yeah. Wait, what, what do you I think what, what we do you still have bet? a five dollar bet about Corvette I, price? I owe by the way. I owe you something. I I can't remember what it was, and I will I will get. It there. was a five dollar bet. It was not. I, I will get there. I'll, I'll like, I'll send you a pizza or something, man. Well, here we'll no, we'll just parlay the bet. Now, okay. $5 bet moves to does Lamborghini debut three vehicles in Monterey or two vehicles in Monterey. Okay. There you go. And if I win, I'm even. And if I and, lose, and if I win, I, I'm up. I'm, I'm, bucks. I'm, I'm, I'm sending you a pizza then. Um, okay. Next up, and this one's going to be stu super, super quick. Lucid introduced the stealth look package for the air. It's just a bunch of dark gray trim on the outside, and that's it. <laughs> yep. Oh, and some dark and some dark trim on the wheels. I mean, six thousand dollars. I mean, it, it, I mean it, it looks pretty cool, and it's fast. Yeah. So. yeah. It 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 takes thirty five of the exterior parts and adds what the company calls a dark stealth polished finish. And you can get it on just about any color as well. So you don't have to get a black car with this package, but it's a black package for the Lucid. It looks cool, but it, that, it's just black. Here's a quick question for you, Bruce, and a quick question for all the Ramblers that are listening out there, because we see black appearance packages all the time. Sure we do. Are they better on an all black car or do those appearance packages look better on a car with color or like, like maybe like a specific color, white or red or, uh, or blue or silver or, or is it better on black? Cause, That's cause my really take, my take is it, it looks so much better on a light colored car. It does a, a white car with a black package really pops. Because it 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 makes all of those bits kind of you know shine out more. So I definitely see that argument. But then you get that super stealthy look though if you go with a black car with a blacked out package and it's just kind of one monochrome thing. They both and, have their advantages. And I owned way back in the day. I had a black 1993. You guessed it, Taurus show. That's um, I swapped over the the chromeless trim from the 9495 model 
Um, I I had, I had black headlight covers, black taillight covers. Um, I even spray bombed the exhaust tips, like a high temper, like a high Mm -hmm. temperature gray. I wanted it just like complete. (laughs) I I was going full stealth fighter with it. Mm -hmm. Um, and actually that that might be when I decided, you know what? It looks better on a, on a lighter colored car. Yeah. I I would be curious about comments about that. Yeah. Here, last one for last our Monterey preview, um, and that is, so the Myers Manx, if you're not familiar with it, it's the classic Volkswagen uh, kind of, you know, buggy, essentially. Uh, in fact, there was a cartoon uh, that Hanna-Barbera made, like, in the late 60s, uh, starring one of these things. Um, the It becomes the Myers Manx 2.0, and it now has a fully electric powertrain. You get a 40-kilowatt battery that covers 300 miles, and it looks cute as a button. <laughs> um, yeah, hard not to like it. It'll be there. It looks really cool. Um, yeah, no, no, no argument here. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm bored with the buggies. I like them. Um, and keep in mind, folks, these are the things that we know about right now. We right. are fully well, expecting to be surprised um, at at multiple points, probably within the next week, week and a half, as as we get to the show and as the show goes on. Like we were saying in the beginning of the podcast, this one feels like it's bigger than normal. Um, certainly mm-hmm. bigger than the last, uh, the, than you know, recent memory. Possibly bigger than even pre-COVID. Um, I and I just I'm getting a, a good sense of excitement around the show. Um, it's also worth pointing out we know Acura is going to do something. We don't have specific details on it yet, but we know th- we know that at least is coming. And yeah, I'm, I'm expecting I'm expecting some other surprise announcements along the way too. Oh yeah, there's going to be a bunch of stuff, especially at like the Quail or stuff like that. That is has either flown under the radar or just pure surprises. So yeah, um, there's going to be a lot more and we'll find out all about that when it comes, but, and the, and there'll be more in the future, but what are we doing now, man? Uh, let's talk about the GMC Canyon, uh, the, the 2024 GMC Canyon to be specific or the, I'd actually, uh, I was going to say something mean. I'm not, I'm not going to say what I was going to say. Go for it. <laughs> Well, actually, GMC lists this has a 2023 model. Um, do they? Th- they do list it as 2023. It's going to go. It's not going to go into production until the very beginning of 2023. So I was, I was kind of surprised with you here that okay, they're they're technically calling it a 2023 GMC Canyon, but um, this vehicle technically has we're recording again hasn't debuted yet this debuts on august 11th we're recording on august 10th but we do have all of the information um 2023 gmc canyon the big news here i mean obviously aside from it being an all-new canyon is the arrival of the at4x which is an upgrade of the old outgoing at4 and it's basically gmc's version of the colorado zr2 and it's i mean they make it sound like a pretty intense off-roader, Bruce. Um, the AT4X. The new Colorado ZR2 is a pretty intense off. That makes sense because right, you know, historically right. these trucks ride on the same platform. So full <laughs> disclosure, I don't have access to the press release. Smith did take a look at it, but weirdly enough, I they did send me the pictures. So we are looking <laughs> at the pictures we're, now, but we're looking I don't at the have photos. Any of the, I don't have any of the specs, but Smith, I'm putting I, I'm guessing here it rides on the same platform as the Colorado, like every other Canyon has shut your mouth. How did you know that? So how did you know that? Wait, wait. Okay. So if you know that, can you tell me what engine it has? Is it a 2.7 liter turbocharged four cylinder? Holy crap. You're amazing. Yes. Well, okay. We're, we're being a little silly here. I mean, yes, the, the Colorado, the Canyon, they're stable meets, obviously. Right. Um, the GMC is usually, it's a little bit of a step up. Either, you know, the, right. the interior might be a bit nicer, or maybe there are some different parts. I am saying this without looking at the press release, but I just know enough that, you know, there are going to be some minor differences. Yeah. Well, let me rattle off some stats uh, just, just to re- remind everybody, it. because the AT4X is brand new to this generation. Mm-hmm. Um, it's got a three inch lift from the factory versus standard. It's got 33 inch tires, the front and rear E diffs. Uh, it has the multimatic shocks on it. 10.7 inches of ground clearance, 36.9 degree approach angles. Um, the AT4X 
inside it, it's it's I, and i think they all have um the 11.3 inch touch screen 11 inch digital instrument uh cluster you can get a heads up display um they offer 10 various cameras outside uh, to get 360 degrees all around the vehicle and that includes underbody up oh, correction waterproof underbody cameras some of which also have features where they can wash the mud off of themselves so you can see just how big the mud hole was after you went <laughs> through it um what else we got here of course i mean it's plethora of uh, standard issue safety systems um like the auto braking uh lane keep assist things like that um so the engine the okay perfect that was that was the segue the i was gonna go never mind go for it he here's where it gets a little interesting because the Chevrolet Colorado, yeah, they're, they're, they're using the same powertrain. That's uh, uh, the 2.7 liter uh, turbocharged four-cylinder. In the Chevrolet Colorado, we were given three different tunes of that engine. Um, Bruce, I think I think it started to like 237 horsepower, and it then it went to... 270 and then two three tens, I believe. Oh, okay, 270. And I'll then, yeah, check, but. yeah, yeah, two at 310 horsepower with just different levels of torque. Um, right. Curiously, in GMC's press release for the Canyon, they mentioned the 2.7 liter turbo. It's standard across all the Canyon trim levels. Um, and it has an estimated 430 pound feet of torque, but they don't mention anything on horsepower. Um, so either they haven't they haven't dialed in yet exactly what they're going to do with that engine in the different trim levels. And we haven't been given every single um, Canyon trim level yet either. I mean, they were, they've been talking about the AT four X, which is obviously the, the range topper. Um, there's also the AT four, there's the Denali um, and it has with the Colorado, the new versions of the Canyon are bigger than the outgoing versions of the Canyon, both, I mean, length, width, ride height. You're only getting the crew cab configuration with the, the, the single bed length. Bed length. Um, so those are all the same things. Um, so let me correct yep. myself real quick because you were right and I was wrong. You're right. It is 237 horsepower. Oh, it is. Okay. Base tune. You nailed it. I For some reason, I had 270 in my head. Uh, 237 horsepower is the base tune of the 2.7 liter turbo. 310 is the, both the medium and high output tune, but the high output version gets you that 430 pound feet of torque. Mm -hmm. And it at least so again i've not looked at the press release you have but it sounds like the wording's a bit confusing but maybe well, I, they're all getting the high torque engine I, I mean that's that's the way it reads but i want to be okay. clear that gmc hasn't they haven't listed any horsepower figures for the mm -hmm. canyon the only figure they they provided in their announcements uh and that's still an estimated figure is the 430 pound feet of torque now that matches up with the 310 horsepower version of the engine of torque. Yeah. used yeah used in the in the highest trim levels of the Chevrolet Colorado. Correct. And the release does say this engine will be standard across all trims. But again, it's ambiguous. They might follow different tunes just like the Chevrolet Colorado does or GMC yeah. just might give the whole lineup the uh, the higher tuned engine. Uh, I mean, it's it would be still, a selling point if you think about it. Like, it would be <laughs> a it, reason. It it, it would, and they might need uh, a little extra help for for that selling point because we don't have absolute pricing yet for the starting level of the Colorado or the of the Canyon. GMC says, um, around forty thousand dollars, and I'm trying to choose my words carefully here because they were very nonspecific on what that means for trim levels. Trim levels, plural, will start around 40,000, but the first one that will be built is the AT4X, and that starts at $63,350. Oh, boy. That's... And that's a, that's, a, that's, that's a little bit of coin, man. That's a little that's bit a of coin for, for a truck. canyon. Um one thing worth mentioning too, GMC will offer an edition one package on the AT4X. 
Um, and let me pull that up here really quick because that's going to offer a, a few other items um, that gives you front and rear facing underbody cameras with the watch function that I mentioned earlier. It gives you special off-road front bumper, front 30-inch off-road grill light bar. It gives you a winch, 17-inch beadlock capable wheels, the reconfigurable bed rail system, performance front skid plate, unique edition one tailgate badge. That will be... The, you know, that will be how they kick everything off. Um, but the announcement wasn't clear if that $63,350 is for the AT4X with the Edition 1 package. So long yeah. story short, fo folks, more to come. This isn't mm -hmm. going to go into production until early 2023. So, you know, probably towards the end of 2022 or maybe even in the beginning of 2023, we'll get more information on other Canyon trim levels um some more specific pricing um but bruce let me ask you since you've seen the pictures um yeah, yeah. I, I, I think you've seen and because we're just getting this information as we're recording like in the last hour hour and a half so we're kind of learning about this along with as all you of are. you out there yeah um what do you think on styling canyon or colorado i kind of like the canyon better you like the canyon a little bit better yeah, I do. Exterior styling, interior is kind of a wash from what I can tell. But yeah, in interior, they're I mean they're they're pretty much the same. Uh, the layout yeah. is the same. You'll probably find slightly better materials in the GMC, you know, as you yeah. would. Um, but exterior wise, where you th I prefer the um, Canyon's front grille to the Colorado. I you know I think in in regular trim I would agree with you, um, but I think I like the Colorado ZR2. I think I like okay. that styling. I think I like that look better than what I'm seeing here on GMC Canyon. So folks at, on YouTube, I want you to weigh in and I'm going to pull this up real quick so that you can see them. And so if you can vamp for me one second, I need to get a good, oh, there's a good three quarter. Of yeah. That. Well, I tell you what we of course. Okay. This is a great time for me to do my speech while you're doing that, because this is particularly uh, poignant here. We would very much like to get your feedback on Canyon versus Colorado, and you can do that by commenting on our YouTube uh, uh, video that goes up. Motor One Podcast on YouTube is where you'll find it. If you're listening on a streaming platform, you can always email us, podcast at motorone.com. Let us know what you think there. You can always go to our article that goes up every Friday at motorone.com that summarizes the podcast, everything that we're talking about. You can leave a comment there. We're very interested in hearing your take because for the past few years, it feels like there's, there's been some controversy, I think a little bit surrounding some of the styling decisions being made in the, uh, in the truck segment, not just at GM, but other automakers. And now okay. we have, we have two vehicles um, that are siblings. They're, they're the same platform underneath. They're running the same powertrain. You sit inside them and they're going to feel about the same. Um, they have same capabilities as far as really aggressive off-road features. The difference is coming down to styling, materials, and price. So we have the GMC Canyon, the brand new model, and then we have the Chevrolet Colorado. And we so, want to know which one you would prefer. Yep. So we I can't um, get them literally side by side, but I can do this. So we're going to play optometrist real quick. So better one <laughs> or two. So... <laughs> One, here we have uh, the GMC Canyon in AT4X trim. Mm -hmm. I I think it's a good, I, I, I don't like it. Yeah, it's not It's not bad. I don't think it's bad. I, th I think then, it's better than the outgoing model. Oh, yeah. And then, give me just a second. Here we have the Colorado in ZR2 Desert Boss trim. So ZR2 with basically some different wheels. Um, I mean, I mean, you know, when you look at them really close or really quickly like that, you realize just how similar they actually are. They're a little more similar than I was expecting. But the 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 Chevrolet just feels a little bit edgier to me. And yeah. in, in this segment, um, a more aggressive, higher end off roader. This feels a little bit more aggressive to me. Um, it feels a little sharper. I'm I'm going with the I'm going with the Chevy. And Bruce, I mean, do you, GMC. <laughs> do, do you remember? Um, did we have costs for the Colorado? I in that story right now, I do not believe we had 
any cost. I'm going to double check. No, I would have had it in the story if we did. We did zero costs at all. So interesting and interesting that GMC gives us a very specific figure for the AT4X of $63,350. We're not sure if that includes destination fees, but we don't have any pricing Probably on the Chevrolet Colorado. Doesn't. Usually it doesn't. Usually, Usually it doesn't. doesn't. Yeah. Usually it doesn't. So an estimate of around 65000 might be might be pretty That's realistic. Pricey. That's really pricey. That's pricey. For, for a GMC Canyon. Um, well, s- speaking of pickup trucks and prices, perfect segue. Da, da, da. The 2023 Ford F-150 Lightning is $7,000 more than it oh, was last year. <laughs> so much for the under $40,000 pitch. One and done. Yeah. One year and done. I know... I know prices are up. I know getting the materials, it's it's harder. But man, that's that's a big jump and a kick in the teeth. You know, it, it, I just I feel like I, I don't feel betrayed, but because I know a, a lot of lightning sales aren't going with that entry level pro. But that's that's a that's a major price jump year over year. So I, it it makes the tiniest tiniest of differences but i will say this so ford increased their destination cost by a hundred dollars for the 2023 versus 2022 so technically if we take away the destination fee it's only seven thousand dollars more expensive thousand dollars do do we know is there anything different about the 2023 lightning there are several things different about the 2023 okay. lightning that, that could that could make a difference lay it on so um, Ford makes heated seats now a standard feature. And what that allows them to do is here. Let me um, read the actual statement because I wrote this story. We were able to reduce the HVAC load on the battery while maintaining passenger comfort by making HVAC seat uh, our heated seat standard. I don't quite understand how that reduces the HVAC load, but regardless, it gives you an extra 10 miles of range in the EPA. So you now, uh, the base battery now gets you 240 miles on a charge versus 230 miles on charge previously. So you're getting an extra 10 miles on the base battery. Right. On the, the which, which, which would, yeah, which would apply to the entry level, uh, F-150 lightning. Yes. Uh, the pro the XLT or the Lariat, any of the ones without the extended range, so you can get the XLT with extended range, the Lariat or the Platinum all come with the extended range. But Pro XLT Lariat with the standard battery, you can go 10 more miles on a charge. So that's something. Also, um, there's a new uh, Pro Trailer uh, tr- Pro Trailer Hitch Assist system. And what that does, it controls the steering, the throttle, and the brakes when you're hooking up a trailer and it's supposed to make that easier. That is... It's part of the tow technology package on the Pro, XLT, and Lariat. Or is, that, it comes, is that standard equipment, though? It is not. That is an optional package. Okay. It is, however, standard equipment on the Lariat extended range and the Platinum. So on the two t- highest end trims, it's a standard feature. On everything else, it's an option. Okay. What and else And there, there are two new colors. We've got Avalanche Gray and azure gray metallic tri-coat. Um, but for 2023, we lose Atlas Blue, Ice Blue Silver, and Smoked Quartz Metallic. So we gain two colors, we lose three colors. Okay. I need, a, I, need, I need like a cricket sound effect here. Because basically <sighs> what, what we have is a oh, seven... Let- it's- Okay. Let me throw this last bit in because one last one last chance. Yep. If you uh, so Ford has been doing it so that reservation holders they have been kind of doing them in groups that they get the opportunity to place an order for the truck. If you were a previous reservation holder that for some reason the truck that you wanted wasn't available, so you said, "Hey, I'll wait for later." Um, I, I will again. I will read the statement from Ford. Okay. 
Current order orders awaiting delivery are not impacted by these price adjustments. We've announced pricing ahead of reopening order banks so that our reservation holders can make an informed decision around waiting for a lightning. And what that means is, is that the increased price isn't necessarily going to affect someone who delayed their reservation. Ford is going to go to them and they are going to kind of negotiate presumably a lower price. They didn't, they didn't come out and say that. <laughs> But they they don't want, like it says, current order holders awaiting delivery are not impacted by these price adjustments. So if you already had a reservation, you placed an order, but your order hasn't been delivered yet, you don't pay the higher price for your truck. That's so, that's a little bit. It's not a lot. It's not a lot. It's no, it's, it's, it's a it's, little it's, bit. It, it's really not. Um, we have a $7,000 price increase for an extra 10 miles of range um, and heated seats. Standard heated seats. You could get them before, but now all of them get them. But but yeah, now, now it's standard. Um, I mean, I'm a Ford fan. Um, I just, I guess the question I end up asking is, okay, did Ford just really underprice the Lightning to start with just to, just to, establish themselves in the field or have cost gone up that much because a $7,000 year over year price increase uh, without any appreciable extra equipment or significant changes. And I'm sorry, 10 miles of range. Um, that's, that's something that can be affected by just the direction that the wind is blowing. Right. Sure. So, so uh, again, so I'm, I'm being a little critical. I'm being a little critical. I but, will quote for Ford word for word here. Significant okay. material cost increases and other factors are the reason for the increased price. And okay. I, well, hey, at I, least at least Ford, at least they they offered something there. Can can I make it kind of worse a little bit in a way? <laughs> so a platinum extended range for 2023 is now ninety eight thousand six hundred ninety nine dollars after destination fee. That's $6,130 more than the 2022 model year. And since that's the extended range battery and not the regular battery, they do not get that range increase. So they are paying $6,000 more essentially for that trailer assist feature. And that's all they're getting more than if they bought it last year. Yep. I mean, it's the prices are up across the board, but let's be honest, if you are in a position to pay $90,000 for a vehicle paying 98,000 probably isn't going to phase you too much. That's true. If however, you were in the market for something right around the low 40,000 range, you're now paying getting getting close call to 50, it 49, 50 grand. Yeah, yeah, getting getting close to 50 can can make a big difference. Um people uh, you're watching your you're watching your pennies. A lot closer yeah. to that level, so um, kind of a bummer. Um, I um, will. I, I forgot. I, will, oh, oh. I forgot one little thing. Oh, you keep, you keep pulling these things out that you forgot. No, this Bruce. one's the tiniest of them all. If a fleet is ordering an F one fifty Lightning Pro, they can get the new special service vehicle package, and that puts in heavy duty cloth for the front seats. Uh, built-in steel intrusion plates, and you can add an optional uh, LED warning light on the roof. Because essentially, if you're a fleet, it's a could be police, although probably not, but like construction company, something like that. So seats that can take more abuse and a spinny light. Well, you know, it's a sign of the times. Um, I will give Ford credit for at least stating, hey, the, the yeah. material the, the price of materials is up everybody all around the world knows that everything is a little bit more expensive right now yeah um, and like i wrote still, this story and it's Ford, still kind of a bummer it's a bummer but they weren't you know in talking to people they weren't bad about it like you know I, i'm sure if you went to, to any product planner at ford and said did you want to raise the price by seven thousand dollars of course they didn't want to but you know it, it, unfortunately, that's the way things are. Um, so, it, yeah, that, that's it, the it, way it things is, are. It is a fact of life in 2022. Um, 
You want to spend some fake money now, Bruce? I'd love to. Let's let's move on to um, what will probably be the final segment of the podcast. Yeah, this, is, so. this is a little unrehearsed, and as we just before we launched the podcast, um, I realized that okay, we're not doing things the way I thought we were going to. Long story short, we have the the Nissan Z. Nissan yep. launched the online configurator for the Z. They sure did. And um, people are paying attention to that. We did a, a most expensive uh, post that you wrote, Bruce. Yeah, um, I did what, both most expensive and a pricing post because we didn't really have yep. a good pricing breakdown. So if you're looking on YouTube, you can see here, here's what it starts at after destination. So one of the actually the cool things, and I think this is really nice and more automakers should do this, is that there is no price difference between if you want the six-speed manual or the nine-speed automatic. So you're well done, you're Nissan. Your trim level. Um, well done, Nissan. And and rattle off these prices for those that can't see us on YouTube. Absolutely. So this is after the one thousand twenty five dollar destination price. We we prefer to do that at Motor One because that price is getting tacked on anyway. So we might as well. It's kind of like ripping off the band aid. You might as well know what it's going to cost. So base model is called the Sport. That's forty one thousand fifteen dollars. Uh, the higher trim is the performance. That's fifty one thousand fifteen dollars, ten grand more. And then there's the proto spec, which is technically an option package on top of the performance, and that's fifty five thousand three hundred and ten dollars. There's a caveat there though, because they're only selling two hundred and forty of those in the United States for the twenty twenty three model year. So if you, you got to act fast, kind of to get if you want that proto spec, but mm -hmm. yeah, and. I think I think Toyota would be sweating bullets right now. I would find a very difficult reason to go for the Supra over over the new Z. What do you think, Bruce? Yeah. 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 I mean I mean, I mean jumping uh, jumping right into just even even a lower spec model in the low forty range with your manual right, transmission. The thing is, and we should mention this, is that the Z comes with one power, or it comes with one engine. You can choose yep. the transmission. It's a three liter twin turbo V6 making 400 horsepower and 350 pound feet of torque. Mm -hmm. So unlike the, the Supra, there's no compromise. You don't say, oh, I only got the four cylinder one, not the inline. You, you know, there's everyone's getting the same engine. It's just kind of what amenities and stuff like that you're getting with it for that money. And, so, uh, yeah. and, and and at the same time, this is actually a Nissan. Whereas, yeah, I know. Right. Let's go ahead and send the no. hate mail. Podcast at motor1.com. The new Toyota Soup is really a BMW with with Toyota coach built body parts. Yeah, that's the problem. Like, it's a BMW engine. It's a BMW interior. Not that I there's really not that there's anything wrong with that powertrain, but if I no, want no, a Toyota, no. I I want a Toyota, right? I don't. Right. I, I don't want a rebadged BMW, and that's I, I, I right. kind of feel that way about the car. And I, and I like, think a lot of people do. Toyota is famous for its engineering. You know, your your two JZs and just things like that. And, and not that BMW is not famous for engineering, but like if I buy you know a Supra, I want it to be the best Toyota can put in. And you know, it, it, maybe it is an inline six or just whatever. And they kind of, you know, it's a lot of BMW parts. Whereas, you know, say what you will about the new Z that, yeah, there's a lot of things that are kind of still in common with the 370Z, but it's all Nissan. Um, so, yeah. But well, let's, let's, let's move let's on to, to the, the fun configurations because this is something we've never done before. And nope. a lot of times when new cars come out, the automaker will launch the configurator and we'll share a post at motor1.com um, mm -hmm. letting you know. Okay, here's the price. The configurator is up. Um, jump into the configurator and have some fun. And we thought, well, maybe that could be cool here. And I thought we would do it online together and come right. up with the ultimate rambling about cars, Nissan Z. And, you know, I log in and I'm talking to Bruce and Bruce is like, yeah, I configured mine earlier. I can't wait to show it. And I'm like, ooh, I didn't. I, I misunderstood. I didn't, I'm, I didn't configure. I'm sorry. No, no I, I misunderstood. But maybe no, we can uh, maybe we can build one here together. Absolutely. If if we can if we can 
figure right. out what we want. That's why um, I'm not scrolling up right now because it, you can see it says resume at the top of my screen and I don't want you to see what I already built. So, ah, uh, okay. Well, did, I haven't built anything yet. Do you want me to share my screen and we can build it on mine? Yeah, let's do it that way. Okay. Let me, uh, let me switch this over here. And for those who aren't able to go to YouTube, if you can try to get to YouTube at some point later on, you can see exactly what we're doing. We'll do our best to uh, to we'll give be you very audio, we, to, to, to give you to give you auditory clues here. So exactly, this will um, be like an audio book. Okay, how are we looking there? We we got the configurator Looks up. Looks good. Sure okay, do. so we're at NissanUSA.com, and we have well, I mean, the first choice is what trim are we going to go with? The Nissan right. Z Sports, the the Base model, 39,990 with a nine-speed auto, the six-speed manual, the performance, or the proto-spec. I mean, with money being no object, obviously you go for the proto spec, but let's let's try to but let's try to be realistic, right? There's a really good color on the performance. Do, do you so, want to go with performance or or do you want to try to do a, a really cool budget build? Okay, so my thing, so we should say the proto spec only comes in that yellow that you're yep. seeing there. It's got a really cool name. It's it's something in Japanese. I'll butcher it if I try to do it off the top of my head. But it's <laughs> it's it's got a cool name and it's a cool color. But it's the only color you can get. And since I kind of cheated and built one already, there's a color I like more. So, but yeah, let's do a budget build. I think that's fair. Okay, so it it's got to be the manual then, right? Okay. The, do you want the automatic? Do you really want the automatic? It, 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 for my uses, I need a car my wife can drive, so I need the automatic. But let's pretend you and I are living together. We're the odd couple. We're we Statler are, and Waldorf. We're the odd couple. Well, now I feel like I'm bullying you, and I don't want to bully no, you. No, you're not bullying me. No, okay. All right, six then let's get this Nissan Z Sport with a six-speed manual. Yeah? Cool. Yes. Starting MSRP, 39990 plus destination. Right. The V6. Twin turbo coming this fall, build in price. Okay, now we're on to the exterior screen. So and they have all of these offers. Just click the X there on the right because they want their financing offer. So oh yeah, get rid of that. Okay, so paint color. We'll start with paint color. Um, what do we got here? Two tone, two tone Ikazuki yellow tricoat. Yeah, that's the one that's exclusive to the Proto. Uh, two tone passion red tricoat. Uh, two tone Syrian blue tri coat, two tone boulder gray pearl, two tone brilliant silver metallic with black, uh, two tone Everest white with black, rosewood metallic, diamond or black diamond pearl, gun metallic. Can we not have it be some shade of gray or black? We can because check out that rosewood metallic. To me, that is just a dead sexy color. Oh, look at that. I got I got to take my glasses off for a second. That's, That's good. good, right? That's good. Let let me let me just take a quick look at this two tone. Oh, that's good uh, too, if, though, I Bruce. I think if you scroll down just a bit, you can switch the angle so you can like see it front on that's, or That's that's um the the two tone passion red tri coat with super black. So, you have the black roof with just a just a bright red, red uh body. Um, it's not letting me scroll that, here. Uh, okay, never mind. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, I know you can switch what's, what's, views later. What's on. this blue? Oh man, that blue looks good too. I'm a big fan man, of blue. You, you want to go with the, the rosewood's good though. That just the no, no, no. we don't have to go rosewood. Monotone. I would I would go red and black as well. Um, just the blue and black wasn't doing it for me. I would say between rosewood and red black two tone. Let's go rosewood. What do you think? I love that color. So yeah, Why you're not, not going to get any fight out of me. <laughs> All right. So let's, let's see there. Show available interiors. Okay. Here's. So the, the only issue with the Rosewood is you only get the, black only get interior. The, gra the, the graphite cloth interior. You know, that's fine. That's, that's, that's fine. Okay. So click done there and let's, let's pick our next choice. I'm, I'm just kind of taking a look. Yeah, that, that looks good. Yeah. We need to hurry up. We could do this for like an hour. So, Oh, I, I got nowhere to be. Um, Yes, vehicle in stock. Uh, so body body, body protection, protection. Do we want anything there? The the splash guards or the hood protectors? No. We can always we can always do that in the garage. Exactly. You yeah. know we, we don't need to pay two hundred bucks. Um, styling. What do we got? 
the chin spoiler. Oh, the let me rear see that. spoiler, dual racing stripes. Oh, the dual the racing spoiler. stripes look cool. The I so I had that on mine. They're just on like the roof and the back. They're not on the hood. They look kind of cool. Check that out. Okay, let's um, let's put let's put the chin spoiler on. I, I want to see okay, how that looks. See how that looks. Doesn't look yeah. any different. No, I can't I, I mean, it's, that. It's it's very very subtle. Yeah, we can. Yeah, I can. For hundred seventy bucks, we can we can do without that. Um, but we wanted to see the stripes, right? Yeah, you need to go to the back because they're not on the hood. They're just on the roof and the rear deck. All right, let's let's take a look here at the back. Let's move the uh, the images back to the back. So see there, if you look just. <gasps> oh, so it, okay, I see. It's kind of subtle. Yeah, it is. It's kind of subtle, and we did add the uh, the, the rear spoiler for I think it was six hundred and thirty dollars. I think you got to, I know we're trying to do a budget build, but mate, the rear stripes, I could say yes or no. Okay. I could see that, but the rear spoiler has got to be there. That just, I, it I, I think two Z without it. I think it absolutely has to be there. And I mean, budget build, I mean, we're, we're at 42,000. Okay. I mean, I mean, that's, I mean, that's not cheap, but that's, I mean, for a 400 horsepower rear wheel drive sports car with a six speed, I think it's doing pretty darn good. And keep in mind, with the destination, it's 41. So we've only added like $1,000 in options so far. Yeah. Okay. So moving on here. Um, lighting. Let's see. We don't Exterior need, ground lighting. Was it the, we don't need ground effects. Is that going to be lighting. like the... Uh, we, can, we can go over to the auto parts store and get that ourselves, man. Exactly. Yeah. We don't need that. What it's a three hundred ninety five dollar option. It, I mean, is it like the like the the puddle like the door lighting? I think they or, are or puddle, puddle lights. lights yeah. yeah. Um, if you click, so if you see the little arrow on the right hand side of the screen, if you click on that, it explains what things are. Uh, right. Yep. Click oh, there. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Oh no! It's oh, it's it's not it's not puddle. It's actual ground effect lighting. Oh, the that's factory. tacky as hell. I we yeah can't yeah that. that's, yeah that's kind of tacky. Yeah, we're yeah we're not gonna do that. If I'm gonna do that, that shit's gonna be like like neon yellow or something. People are gonna see it. I don't want white. Yeah. All right. Okay. So we'll we'll remove that. That's the only option in lighting. Um, and now we're up to miscellaneous already. Evidently. Um, and we don't need wheel locks. Wheel locks for seventy bucks. No, we don't need I, that. I, we don't need wheel locks. We don't need that. So are those the only options on the well, so uh, on the click, sport? No. So see on the top where it says exterior, interior. Oh, accessories. OK. I was, I was going to say we what? There's no interior options. OK, so we got the graphite cloth um, weather protection. That's going to be what, like floor mats, floor mats, probably. Let's let's skip that. If I want to go floor mats, you know, we can get some like some nice yep. weather tech or something, right? Yep. Um, technology. Here we go. This is a weird one. Virtual key for four hundred and fifty dollars, and it appears to just be like an app. An app? Yeah. Start it up. Lock on lock door. Start your Nissan Z all without a key. Uses an app on your compatible smartphone or but Apple the Watch. Key, like I, I, I bet this this is going to be like like an unlockable software thing. Is what this yeah. is going to be. I mean, they're not, they're certainly not charging $450 for an app. It'll be a software thing um, that if you choose the option, they just unlock that part of the software and then you can connect your phone to the Nissan app. Um, I'm not too keen on that unless you want it. No, 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 a no. $450 option. Yeah. Nope. Uh, USB charging cable set for 90 bucks. I can buy USB cables for cheaper than $90. So. Now, the dual camera drive recorder. So click on the arrow. On that. that one is neat. For 360 bucks. Right. It's a dash cam that comes straight from the factory. I would I would go for that just because I have dash cams in my vehicles and they work well, but I mean it's always kind of a pain to route the uh, to, to route the wiring. Um, mm -hmm. I just have them with suction cups on the windshield when it's hot, like it's been here in South Dakota for the last week and a half. If you park outside for a couple hours, you come out and you find they're off the windshield. Um, a good quality camera for $360 points forward to capture what is in front of the vehicle points inside to catch what happens in the cabin impact sensor. I, I, I'm good for that. I'm good for that. I, yeah, I have no fight there. Yeah. All right. Well, let's add that sucker. And let's see, that's yep, we're technology lighting, right? lighting, interior so. accent lighting. 
what is that? Just just LEDs. Just, just ambient lights. Yeah. Yeah. For four hundred and forty-five dollars, no. No, this the point of this car is to drive it and enjoy it and just have a blast. Right. So, uh, the brushed metallic illuminated kick plates for four. Ooh, those kind of look looks cool. cool, but I don't know if it's four hundred dollars cool. Four hundred dollars cool, yeah. I'm, I'm sure you can find some aftermarket items if you wanted to dress it up. I mean, it, they do look good, no doubt. It, but it, I don't it know looks if good. Four hundred dollars if I would want it. I mean, we're just looking at it. it uh, I mean, what are those? Yeah, stainless steel, just stainless yeah. steel door kick plates. Yeah, a little little pricey. Let's let's move on here. Let's move on from that one. Uh, cargo, what's this going to be like? A cargo cover, carpeted trunk protector, cargo nets. I so, generally never get any of this stuff. Well, uh, the retractable cargo pricey, cover though. though. I pay like the one in our Subaru was half that money. So I don't understand why that's five hundred dollars. Yeah, five hundred bucks is is pretty expensive. And I mean, we're talking about just a, a retractable cover, right? That that you pull back that that uh, that hides what might be underneath in the uh, in, in and the they are area. useful and also oh, yeah. they keep stuff out of the sun as well so if you got stuff back there it does keep stuff cooler they're useful but five hundred dollars is kind of pricey and there there isn't um there isn't just like a, a standard hard cover that comes with it evidently it doesn't, doesn't look like yeah okay uh, well i guess we could skip all of that then yeah yeah let's I like the idea of having a cover back there. But I do too. But not, not at five. Not at five hundred. Yeah, not at five hundred. We yeah. paid less than that for the stripes we put on it. <laughs> okay, safety and comfort, emergency road Thank kit, you. Nissan Z first aid, security impact sensor, a trash bin or a seatbelt <laughs> extender. Yeah, we're just no. We don't need any of that. No, nope. we're noping out of That's that. Miscellaneous. Miscellaneous ads. Carpeted floor mat package for three hundred eighty dollars. I did add on mine the frameless auto dimming mirror. I do love an auto, auto mirror. Yeah, yeah, those those are nice. Um, I'm not even gonna click the arrow on that. I'm just gonna click add because I'm with you on that one. Yeah. Nissan Z owner's manual portfolio for twenty five bucks. Oh, look at that! It's just a. It I mean, looks it's, cool. It's just a just a neat little uh, just a neat little package for the owner's manual that you're never gonna read. It's twenty five bucks. Can we do it? Sure. Can we I mean, buy it? It looks dead? cool for twenty five bucks. I would Can hope your dealer it? would just like throw it in, but yeah, the dealer will throw it in for like a hundred and fifty dollar market adjustment, right? There you go. Um, okay, so that's lighting, that's everything cargo. There. Oh, that's everything there in accessor- oh, and so actually, accessories. And so actually, accessories just reiterates everything. Um, because really, like I said, I've done this already. But yeah, if you click through, it's just okay. All the other stuff we already saw, just kind of organized in a different way. Yeah, okay, that is weird. So that's it then, right? We're yep. done? Are we built? Yeah. So sc- let's see. Move move to summary. You're almost done. Get the best More local that. pricing. Yeah, we're not gonna I'm I'm familiar with my Nissan dealer. So So forty two eight forty. Mm-hmm. And it started at thirty nine nine ninety and one thousand. We only added like fifteen hundred bucks in options. Um one thousand two hundred twenty-five dollars for the exterior, six hundred dollars for the interior, so and then yeah, and then additional cost. That'll be the destination of one thousand twenty-five dollars total cost, forty-two thousand eight hundred and forty dollars. Am I and jaded for saying that's not bad for a? I love I, those stripes. I, I don't think it's bad. Yeah, the the stripes. I'm generally not a fan of stripes. If they I extended, like the fact that they're not on the hood. It's just the roof and the rear well, deck. It well, just they, does they, nothing. They are on the hood, but they don't extend all the oh, way down. You're right. Yeah, yeah, Can, yeah. They're, they're just kind of right up there on the power bulge, but they don't extend all the way down like you would see like a you know, like a Shelby stripe. I'm not a yeah. fan of, of big stripes like that. Uh, but these look properly subtle. Uh, there's there's a, a view from the spoiler. rear. Yeah, a little like, spoiler a- from the rear. There's a uh, there's another view for rear of the driver's I side the interior maybe maybe side no, on. you don't get a look at the interior no nope, okay. we, we don't get another another look at the interior okay I'm not so I wish I wish I, there was an option to change the wheels though did did we miss anything there was, was so there an option as far to as I know the, the only way 
the performance gets a set of wheels and then the um proto spec gets a different set of wheels okay so there are only three wheel options and essentially you have to get okay. another package to get them and and the thing i don't really like about these i'm just not a huge fan of dark wheels in general um especially on a darker colored car and this sure. particular shade is a nice deep maroon red so uh, go or, 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 pink or, colors a, again a, i'm a curious can you on here I feel like there aren't that many light colored paint colors, are there? Uh, I mean, no, you've got you've you got silver. Yeah, you've got silver. Um, you do have white. Let's see that. Yeah, white with it. the black. You know, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier. The black wheels look a lot better on that white car than they do, they do. on yeah. on the on the maroon. Yeah, and I also like that these wheels are a fairly basic five spoke design nothing yeah. nothing yeah. over engineered nothing crazy i would just like those in just like like a silver or aluminum i'm still mm -hmm. kind of old school like that i i like the brighter flashier wheels. but keep in mind this is the first model year for this and we you know adding wheels is something any automaker is going to do because that's a stupid easy thing yep. to kind of introduce so but yeah, you and I showed that you can get a very nice 2023 Nissan Z for a relic for, you know, well, that's with that color. What was it with the rosewood? It was 42 um, something. With yeah, the, rose, yeah, rosewood. Uh, shoot, we're click on a non oh, there it is. Uh, price added color real quick. Yeah, so rosewood yeah. metallic is a no charge paint color. Yeah, um, all of these 840. All of these two tones. Um, they're varying in price from 895 for the gray, pearl, and black up to um, the two tone passion red with super black. That's 1695, 1695. So um, the only they non. They, uh, they really need to add more colors. I think that's an issue. Yeah, There's well, you've got not... you've got the rosewood metallic there that's a no charge color. Yep. You've got black diamond pearl. I mean, it, it's black. It's or there, or then you metal. have, and then you have the gun metallic, which is a, a gunmetal gray. Um, yeah, the the rosewood, that, that's an attractive color, and it doesn't cost extra. Right, right. Well, this was actually really fun. Um, listeners, let us know because the, I had a lot of fun doing this. Smith, I hope you had fun doing yeah. this. I could see doing this again with some other interesting vehicles, especially yeah. like. You know, something new comes out. We kind of already do our configurator series on Motor One. So if someone's watching this and kind of thinks it's fun, let us know because give us some feedback on this. This we're was just, a neat idea. You came up with this, and I could see doing it again. We're we're kind of we're kind of just going by the seat of our pants here. Oh. Um, hopefully, it's not too boring on your side. But right, if you're into if if you're into cars, I mean. <sighs> We all like to dream, right? We all like to shop, and we especially right. like to shop when we don't have to spend any money. So right. this is sort of a way you can go in and build your own dream car, whether it's a $40,000 Nissan Z or it's a $250,000 911. Yeah, um, car, that's what I was about to say. Car fans, go to Porsche's configurator. Maybe we'll just have to do that one day just for fun. Do that would have to like, be... The you know, amount of customization that their <laughs> configurator lets you do. Like, do you want yellow? That would be that would be a three hour podcast <laughs> trying to get through all of that. This configurator was actually pretty uh pretty easy to use, and they yeah, don't offer a lot of features, uh, at least on, on the lower on the lower trim here of the Z. Yeah, you anybody that's been on a Porsche configurator, <laughs> it's absurd. Yeah, what color <laughs> stitching do you want for your seat belts? You know, it's yeah. uh lot of options and everything costs money so yeah oh, let us know yeah. what you think on this um you know the drill email us podcast at motor one.com comment on our video that goes up on youtube motor one podcasts comment on our article that goes up every friday hit the like hit the follow hit the subscribe wherever you're at let your friends know we want to do more stuff like this Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much going to be our podcast for today. And sure we is. promise, 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 promise. Because now for like the last few weeks, we're always saying, email us, let us know. Right. We and promise then, next week we've got so many good comments. We have some cheap car challenges that were sent to us. We from have Europe, some, no less. Yes. And uh, we have some just some great feedback, some great insight that uh, that's been posted on YouTube. We're going to get to all of that. I promise. 
Totally. Yeah, I, I definitely want to go through all that stuff. It seems like, fingers crossed, next week might be maybe a, a slightly slow-ish news week. I, I, I know we, had, we know oh, you, there's one. Vehicle. You just doomed us now, man. I did. But <laughs> yeah, I want to get to as many comments as we can. Yep. Um, I am off, a, not off of work. I am off a week on comments. I got the previous episodes. I responded to all of those. I haven't gotten to the most recent episodes comments. Um, and I will do that as soon as I can. Um, Smith and I, we... Uh, our our personal stuff has uh, gotten all sorts of wonky recently, so we're we're trying our best. Um, but exciting yeah, exciting times. Exactly. Uh, as always, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. We love the fact that you're listening to us. We hope you enjoy the show. We love getting your comments. I promise you, we're going to read them. Um, but this has been a really fun episode, Smith. Your idea to do the configurator thing. I think that's got some legs, unless it just bored everyone else to tears. But it well, was really fun for me. You know, so before we go, I know you're doing your spiel, but yeah, go for it. What what, what did you build? Um, so I did a performance trim. So the next level okay. up in that uh, the rosewood because I just I think that color is fantastic. There is I, I won't have time to pull it up. Oh, we got. Let me see if I can pull it up. There's a, an old image of a 240Z, and I swear that same color. Well, probably. Um, that uh, I have looked at. Oh, you know what? First try, I found it. Hold on one second. Um, let me pull this image up, and I will share it. Um, I mean, as I think about it now, I think I've seen some of those older 240s in that same shade of rosewood, um, that, that deeper maroon Here it color. Is. So yeah, uh, it's. I think the rosewoods may be a bit lighter, but this is a seventy-two, two forty Z in mm. such a similar color, and it just fits those cars so well. So I, I, I thought that was cool. But yeah, I went with the performance with that, and then just like I got the um, the dimming rear view mirror because my wife and I have that in our Subaru, and I don't know if I could live without it on a nighttime drive now. Like they're just so useful because you don't get blinded. Mm -hmm. um, I added, I think I, I put in the, um, the dash cam. Uh, I got all weather floor mats, you know, just a smattering of like useful stuff, you know, okay. nothing, nothing crazy. Okay, um, very, yeah. very good. And I, and I totally botched your closing. So no, let's, you let's, let's, pre let's pretend we do a take two for those ah. that like tune out as soon as you hear Bruce say good afternoon, good evening, or good night. You screwed up this time around because there was more, buddy. So let me see. Uh, good morning, good lunchtime, good dinner. I was trying to do something there. Um, but yeah, we love you all. We love you listening. We love your comments. We actually do read them. I can tell you I have read all the comments. I just haven't had a moment to respond to the comments, which... So please understand that. But I do read them all. I Smith, I think you read them all. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we do look at them. It's just, you know, sometimes just life gets in the way. But we love you all. We love doing the show. Um, but yeah, it's fun. Have a good evening. Have a good morning, wherever you are. Have a good drive. Um, but yeah, we love you. Bye bye. See you. Bye.